All right, so for the first one, okay, it says fill in the table for the equation. All right, it gives you an equation that says f of x. Remember, f of x means function of x, which means you're going to have to plug something in. Okay, so this one says plug 1 in. What do you get out? Okay, so if we try that, if I plug 1 in for x, this is what my equation would look like. 4 times 1 minus 9. Okay, 4 times 1 is 4, minus 9 is negative 5. All right, so what that means is when we plug in 1, that's at when 1 is x, right, we get out negative 5. Remember, the left side is always the inputs, the right side is always the outputs. Okay, all you're doing is plugging it in for x. All right, so you could plug 2 in, you could plug 3, you could plug 4, you could plug 5, and you could do this a bunch more times. Or you could just look at the slope. Okay, if the slope is 4, all right, that means we're going to be going up 4 every time. In other words, we're going to be doing this. Up 4 every time, right? So negative 5 plus 4, negative 1, plus 4, 3, plus 4, 7. plus 411. All right, so you could plug every one in, or you could just plug the first one in, see what you get, and then just use the slope. All right, I'm checking the chat. How'd you do it, Jocelyn? Oh, okay. All right, number two, okay, same thing. All right, you start by plugging one in. Two times one, two times one is two, plus one would give you three. Okay, so that means we're gonna start with three, and then we're gonna add two every time. Five, seven, nine, 11. Okay, and what you should have noticed is that I, I believe it's this point that they share in common. All right, but Tyler, why don't, why don't you say, put, put it in the chat to everybody, what you said about taking both equations and putting them in Desmos. Yeah, so take a look at what Tyler's saying here. This is another way you could have done it. Okay, remember, the point where they cross, okay, like what number three is saying, we're kind of getting ahead of ourselves, but it says from 1 and 2, what would be the point of intersection? Okay, so you could look at the tables, all right, and you would have seen, I, I believe they both share the point 5, 11. That's like a point in both tables. So you could have done that, you know, that would have been fine. But if you, if you graphed them, whatever they look like, you would have seen that they crossed at 5, 11 also. So either way, and that's the, that's like that's what I'm trying to. <laughs> hey, that works too, though. That you got it right, right? Correct. I mean, you got it right, yeah. Yep. So Cynthia was saying, I'm going to call you out. Sorry. She said she started counting backwards. You know what I mean? Just to see where, just to see exactly where they would meet. Okay, that's another strategy that would work. All right, so I honestly, like, I don't, I have, I don't care how you guys do this, number one, like number three. I wanted you guys to all do it different ways, okay? Whatever makes most sense to you, just do it that way. Okay. Question four. All right, this one says, check in the chat real quick. Yeah. Yeah, you could use Desmos for sure. You're talking about for number three, right, Brian? Yeah, you can use Desmos for sure. And then you just got to click on it. Click on the point where they cross. All right, so number four, okay? 
true or false questions are kind of tricky because they're saying like all linear functions, okay? So there's an unlimited amount of linear functions. We can make up a bunch of them, right? But this is saying that all of them are increasing. All of them are increasing. So all we have to do is try to come up with a linear function that doesn't do that, and that makes it false. Okay, so boom. That's a linear function, right? It's a line. But as we go from left to right, as we go from here this way, the line goes down. It's decreasing. Okay, so this one should have definitely been false because the thing is they can technically be increasing or decreasing. We actually learned a new word too. They could also be constant. Right? You could have a linear function that looks like this. Where it's not increasing or decreasing, but it's still linear. Okay, so that one should definitely be false. All right, when you get to question five, okay, arithmetic sequences are examples of linear functions. Okay, this is something I expect you guys to remember. All right, we talked about this at the, in chapters one and two. Okay, arithmetic and linear, those are synonyms. They're like the same thing. All right, just like geometric and exponential go together. Okay, so this is something I just, I literally just expect you guys to remember. Okay, arithmetic is the adding one that's linear. Geometric is the multiplying that's exponential. Questions so far? I know I'm going kind of fast, but... All right, so when you get to this one, okay, so like number six, okay, the range for an exponential function always goes negative infinity to positive infinity. Okay, so who remembers, is range the x's or the y's? We gotta remember, we gotta figure that out first. Is that x or y? Should be in your notes, good. Um, yes, it should be Y. And yes, Ricky, you're correct about five. Okay, so remember, the range, okay, the range is the Y's. Okay, that's the up and down. All right, and it's asking about ranges of an exponential function. Okay, so I'm going to just, I want to go and show you guys on Desmos, okay, so you can see it. I can do this, this looks a lot better than my drawings. Okay, so an exponential function is something with an x in the exponent. Okay, something like 2 to the x power. All right, and remember, we're talking about range here. Okay, so up and down, I'm going to zoom way out here. Okay, what's the lowest this graph is ever going to go? the lowest this graph ever goes on the in the picture remember lowest look at the red line we're thinking up and down Zero. Remember we talked about these ones. Remember how they get really close to zero, but it never actually touches it? Okay, it looks like it's touching here, but if we zoom in, if you zoom in really close, 
it's always a little bit above that line. All right, remember, these are exponential, okay? So that means as we go to the right, we're multiplying. That's why it goes up. The numbers get bigger. That means when we go to the left, remember, we're dividing. So the numbers get smaller. But remember, we talked about this. If we keep dividing, keep dividing, keep dividing, we're never going to actually get to zero. So this line right here, it, even though it looks like it touches it actually just gets really, really close and never actually touches it. Okay, does that, is, are there any questions about that? So, the range of this, you guys just told me, okay, the lowest it goes is zero, even though it never gets there. That's why we put the, the parenthesis. And then the highest it goes, if we keep multiplying, is obviously going to be infinity. Okay, so this is what the range of exponential functions are. It's always infinity on one side and then zero on the other. <clears throat> okay, so that one So that's what that's what the parenthesis means. So the parenthesis, when you have a parenthesis next to a number, that means you're going to get really close, but never actually get there. Okay, if, we, if, if it was actually going to get to zero, then we would write it like this. Okay, so that, that's kind of the difference. That's, that's like, this is how we say that. So those exponential ones are always going to look like this. Does that make sense, Jocelyn? That's a good question. Oh, no, you can do it for any number. Yeah, so like watch this. That's a good question. Jocelyn's asking, can we do the parentheses for any number or just zero? So watch what happens if I do this. If I, I'm going to change this equation, okay? I'm going to do a plus one at the end. And so if you notice, I, that literally just moved it up one. Like before I put it, it's right there. If I put plus one, it just moves everything up one. So the range of this one, okay, the range of something like this, would be one comma infinity. And remember, this parenthesis means that it doesn't actually get to one. Make sense, Jocelyn? Cool. Okay, so this one, this one, number six, should be false. This is saying that the range, oops, get that there. this is saying that the range for an exponential function always goes forever up and down. That's basically what it's saying, that exponential functions go forever up and forever down, but we know they only go forever in one direction. It's either going to be like that or like that. Or it could be like this. Okay, but they don't they never go forever up and down. All right, so when you get to number seven here, okay, it says all linear and exponential functions contain domains and ranges that include all real numbers. Okay, this, this goes with the one we just did. 
Remember, domains and ranges means x's and y's. Okay, and all real numbers. Remember, all real numbers, that's like this. That's every number in existence, like forever both directions. And we just got done saying that was false, right? The range does not do that. Okay, so this one kind of goes with num number six. It's just giving it to you in words. I'm giving it to you in words to, to get you to understand. Like, I, I need you to transfer those words into, the, into this. Okay, so understand when I'm saying domains and ranges, that's X's and Y's. So like left, right, up, and down. Okay, all real numbers is like negative infinity to positive infinity. Cool, good. This one, this one's, it's, it's, this one's hard to explain. Okay, so if you have questions, ask, because I'm, I'm probably just not explaining it well enough. All right, don't be afraid to ask questions. I, I'm not like, I don't by any means think that I'm, I'm like the, the best explainer in the world, so... Is eight negative four? Uh, no. So, for number eight, okay, when you when you get to eight, it says to choose the domain of the function in interval form. Interval form is just like the parentheses or the brackets. Okay, but keep in mind, okay, domain, that's x's. All right, so we need to basically cut off the graph, okay, like left to right where it starts and stops, but there's three pieces, okay? So we have one piece there, we got another piece here, okay, then we got a third piece here. Well, if you just go down and look at the answers, what's the only one that has three pieces in it? You know, because if there's gaps in the domain, we, there's going to have to be gaps, there's going to have to be more than one bracket, Yes. Does that make sense, Ricky? And yet. Okay, so again, though, just like, you know, just to make, to make sure we do it, okay? I'm going to go back. I'm just going to erase all this. All right, this, this piece right here starts at negative 4. It stops at 0. Remember, we're talking about x-axis. Domain is x's. So that first part would be negative 4, comma, 0. And there's square brackets. That's a terrible bracket, but they're squares because, remember, it actually gets there. These ones all get there. Okay, the next one starts at 1 on the x-axis and ends at 3. So 1, comma, 3. All right, the fourth one, or the third one, sorry, starts at 4 and stops at 5. So that's where they come from. Let me check the chat real quick. Makes sense? Cool. Okay. All right. And then this one, okay, so remember, it's, it's asking domain again. Okay, so left domain is the X's. So if you look at the, the x-axis, the key, the key thing about x's is that x's mean left and right. Okay, the x-axis, is, is, it goes left and right. So that means we want to look far left, what's happening to our graph, far right, what's happening to our graph. We don't care about up and down. We just care about left and right. And there's arrows, right? Arrows mean it's going to go on forever which is infinity.